Have you ever picked a scrub off and watched the blood trickle down your skin? Do you sometimes eat dead skin from your lips or chew on the inside of your cheek? When you notice that hangnail, do you want to rip it off even though you know it can be painful? A French film director, screenwriter and actress, Marina Duvan, had a very peculiar experience with her body when she was eight. She was hit by a car and broke her leg. Surprisingly, she felt nothing. But at that moment, she saw her leg as something that wasn't a part of her body, just a strange deformed object. After the operation, the skin around the scars became insensitive, and Marina and her school friends created a fun game. They would stick needles into Marina's skin to check if she felt anything. As Marina said in the interview, I was at one and the same time proud of myself for being insensitive to the pain and terrified, really, that my body had become devoid of feeling. It's not unusual for a person to be fascinated by their own body. It never stops changing and every time you might find something new, a spot, a mark, a mole, a weird scar that doesn't want to go away. Our relationship with our bodies are very complicated. When you go through puberty, your body brings so much pain that it's just baffling. What is it for? Why is it happening to me? And when you see the result, if you can put it this way, you're frustrated. Why are my legs so short? Will I grow more? Why do my ears look so big? The list goes on and on. We do like to separate ourselves from our own bodies. The body is just a shell we're all trapped in. You especially feel very detached from your own body when you're physically sick. It's your body that doesn't want to work properly, not you. It's your body you try to find the right medication for, not you. The idea of separation lives in our daily speech. As I grew up, I began to think that in our society we are utterly alienated from our bodies. Think of the work we do in offices. It's as though our bodies could have their own lives and we wouldn't necessarily know about it. There is a split and sometimes our bodies are utterly absent from us. As if it's not already creepy enough, we, as people, turn it into a horror genre and call Pointed by four. Almighty Wikipedia says that Philip Brophy was the first person to use this term in his 1983 article, Horality, the Textuality of the Contemporary Horror Film. But it's obvious that this genre existed way before 1983. Collins Dictionary says that body horror is a horror film genre in which the main feature is the graphically depicted destruction or degeneration of a human body or bodies. The examples might be The Thing or everybody's all-time favorite, The Human Centipede. Body horror explores the anxiety and panic we feel about our bodies, but also our desire to reveal what's under the flesh. The movies are usually very graphic and gory, and their main idea is to visually repulse, disturb or shock the viewer. The genre is pretty broad, but I believe female directors have been using it to get very remarkable ideas across. I want to talk about Marina's film In My Skin, since she uses body horror as a tool to show self-discovery rather than the usual self-destruction. This film, which Marina wrote, directed and starred in, tells the story of a young French woman called Esther. It seems she has everything in life. A good job with a promotion on the horizon, a loving boyfriend and a best friend. But her life changes once she goes to a work-related party. Esther wanders into the garden and cuts her leg on a piece of metal. She comes back to her friends like nothing happened. Esther doesn't even notice that she is seriously injured until she finally spots blood drops that she is leaving behind everywhere. Eventually she goes to a hospital and the doctor, played by Marina's real brother, is amazed that she wasn't in a rush to treat her huge wound and even asks, are you sure it's your leg? Prompting viewers to ponder over the questions like, does this body really belong to me? Esther refuses to have a skin graft and becomes obsessed with opening her wounds, indulging in self-mutilation. First time it happens when Esther's at work. Her boss gives feedback on the analysis she made and says that it's good, but he rewrote some things so she needs to correct it. She understands and even smiles back, but when her boss goes away, she struggles to do it, writing and deleting her words over and over. She goes goes to the storage, finds a piece of metal and cuts her fresh wounds. But the weirdest thing happens after Esther's promotion, when she has a business meeting with very important clients at a restaurant. While everybody else is happily conversing with each other, Esther starts gulping down one glass of wine after another. Her anxiety peaks and she sees how her arm becomes detached from her body. The limb messes with her foot, but Esther can't control it. She manages to grab it and stick it back on, and then under the table she begins stabbing herself repeatedly with a knife and a fork. At first glance, it seems that this film is a commentary on self-harm, specifically self-cutters. As we know, this is mainly a practice of girls and young women. There is always an explanation to such behavior. The emotional pain is just too much to handle, so you need to wait to let it out, or you feel nothing so physical pain can bring you back to reality. However, Marina Duvan herself stated that this film isn't about self-harm. I don't really have all that much to say about the problem of women cutting themselves. That may be a surprise for some people, but it's the truth. 
There is no doubt that Esther is going through major changes in her life when she starts cutting herself. She gets a promotion at work, she and her boyfriend are gradually moving in together, her best friend is jealous of her achievements. So it's easy to just say that she is, like many other cutters, mentally dissociated. Even the opening scene of the movie is a split screen displaying the same picture in different color schemes, negative and positive. Esther is split too. On the surface, she's collected, but an accident forces her to literally dig into herself with blades and razors to find her your identity. So, In My Skin approaches cutting in a very different way, and you understand it as you watch the story go further. After her embarrassing experience in the restaurant, Esther checks into a hotel and continues to play with her hand, sucking blood from the cuts, biting her skin, but then at one point she takes it one step further and begins to cut out pieces of her own flesh and chew on them. She remembers her leg, lies down on the floor, and does the same things – biting, licking, sucking, chewing. Drips of blood fall on her face, and she smears them all over herself. The the scene is very intimate and even sensual. The way Esther engages with her body gives her immense pleasure. It doesn't feel like she's a masochist or self-destructive. She isn't going through a breakdown. It seems like she's been waiting for this moment for a very long time. It's just her and her body. It's shocking and might be even revolting to see a woman scarring herself. Society dictates that female physical attractiveness is crucial. If you see scars and bruises on a male body, it's accepted and even celebrated. It's the symbol of power. For Esther, self-mutilation is her source of power. She she documents her cutting with a camera. She even tries to tan and preserve her skin pieces. Marina Dewan doesn't show extreme displays of violence for shock value. When Esther indulges in her practices, you mostly see her face. What nauseates you is the sound. Some people perceive Esther's actions as a protest against societal norms, and I believe these feminist themes are present, but the ending can also be seen as the culmination of Esther's journey to reach a new level of self-exploration and self-awareness. She's in the hotel room, leaving a message for her boyfriend to say she won't be home tonight, but he should call her back. She also calls to work to apologize for being absent and promises to come tomorrow. The next morning, she wakes up, gets dressed, and places a piece of her skin in her bra and exits the room. However, the next shot shows her still lying on the bed, staring into the camera. Marina Dewan comments on the ending and says, Esther's become so immersed in herself that it's difficult for her to integrate herself. She's become obsessed with her body as an object. Esther's story maybe doesn't get a full closure in the end. This is one of these bittersweet endings. You think to yourself, will she be okay? I personally see it like this. She chooses herself and her body instead of the world that doesn't want to understand her desire. If I'm no longer my body, what am I? Where does this desire come from to want to see what the body is and if I am inside?